In this video, we review Azure Virtual Desktop Short Path with private managed networks. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraldos. In this video, we go over how to use a private network connection for a better user experience with Azure Virtual Desktop. Before that, please like and subscribe and share with a friend. That gets the word out about this channel. Also check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop Windows 365, and others at udemy.com, and sign up for my newsletter to stay on top of all the Azure news. Links are below. Also, a shout out to the channel members. Thank you for your support. Back to it. RDP has been around since Windows Server NT40. It's gone through a lot of changes since then. This isn't a history lesson. I'll spare you with the details. In this video, we start by looking at how RDP connections work with Azure Virtual Desktop in the default non-optimized configuration and then we look at how we can improve that with RDP Short Path for Azure Virtual Desktop. Let's start with the default way users connect to Azure Virtual Desktop using reverse connection transport. We start with an Azure Virtual Desktop infrastructure, including the RD Gateway, RD Web, and RD Broker services. The shared services that act as a bridge between the client and the session host. We have our session host and client, and of course, Azure AD. There is no inbound connection from the internet to our session host. Instead, when a session host starts, the remote desktop agent loader service establishes an outbound connection to the AVD broker using a reverse connection transport. This is a persistent communication channel between the two. When the client connects to AVD, first they authenticate to Azure AD. Then the client gets their feed subscription, getting a list of available desktops and application. This happens over a feed or control session between the client and AVD. The user selects a resource to connect to. A secure connection over TLS 1.2 is established between the client and the nearest Azure Virtual Desktop Gateway instance. The gateway validates the request and passes it to the broker to orchestrate the connection. The broker identifies a session host and uses the persistent connection created when the session host started. Then a TLS 1.2 connection is established between the session host and the client. From there, the gateway relays data between the two endpoints. Then the client starts the RDP handshake and the RDP session. The RDP session is established over the TLS 1.2 connection and passed through the RD gateway. Keep this flow in mind as we walk through AVD short path. Notice that the RDP connection flows between the client, the gateway, and the session host. All RDP traffic flows through the gateway. This flow works in almost any circumstance and is the fallback when other methods fail. It will work if the clients are connected from home or from the office, providing they have internet connectivity. Now for the next example, we have a client on premises at a corporate office. There's a VPN or express route circuit between the client and the session host. In this scenario, we have connectivity over the private or managed networks. Left as is, the previous connectivity flow applies. The RDP stream is routed from the client over the public internet and back to the session host. The gateway is used to connect the client and the session host. We have a line of sight between the client and the session host. Wouldn't it make more sense to send the RDP data over the managed network? In most cases it would, and that's what RDP short path for managed networks does. At the initial connection, all of the same steps are taken. The connection is initiated over the public internet, but there's an additional step. In this step, the client and session host exchange their capabilities. Once a secure connection is made, the session host sends a list of IPv4 and IPv6 addresses to the client. The client creates a thread in the background to establish a parallel UDP-based connection to one of the session host's IP addresses. At the same time, the connection over the public internet continues so there's no interruption in the RDP connection. If the client successfully establishes a direct UDP connection to the session host over the managed network, the RDP session, including graphics, input, and device redirections, takes place over the UDP short path. If the private connection fails, the TLS connection over the RDP gateway will be used. The advantage to RDP short path is that we remove a relay point, and with a more direct connection, that leads to a lower round trip time. Also, as traffic stays on the managed or private network, we can enable QoS or quality of service on that traffic. Let's look at what's needed to configure short path for managed networks next. To start, we need a Windows Remote Desktop Client version 1.2.3488 or newer. 
short path for managed networks won't work on non-Windows clients. There needs to be a direct line of sight between the client and the session host. This could be with a site-to-site -site VPN or express route. We have to enable RDP short path for managed networks on the session host. For a short path to work, the client has to connect to the default port 3390 on the session host. We have to allow that port on any firewalls, including the Windows firewall on the session host. We have to enable a Windows policy called Enable RDP Short Path for Managed Networks in the Azure Virtual Desktop Administrative Template. We can do this locally on session hosts or with a group policy. For the client, we have to set the policy named Turn Off UDP on Client to Not Configured. If this setting is enabled, the client won't use UDP and will fall back to the default path through the RD Gateway. Let's go to our Windows client to get started. Here we are on the client computer. This is a Windows VM with line of sight to the session host. Let's check the client version. That's newer than 1.2.3488 required for short path and managed networks. Let's connect to the host pool. Here we are logged into the host pool. Let's take a look at the connection details. Our connection quality is good. Notice our transport protocol is WebSocket. If you're following along, there's a good chance you'll see UDP in this view. That means RDP short path for public networks is working. This video isn't going into that. I just want to point out why you may see something different. And although it's using UDP, the connection is routed over the public internet. I had to change the default configuration in order for this to show WebSocket. We'll fix that in a minute. Also, notice the round trip time, it's three milliseconds. That's good, let's see if we can make it better. We'll close settings, and let's log out. We're going to RDP directly to the VM and log in as an administrator. I'm connecting this way for the demo because to change the local policy and firewall rule, we need to be logged in as an administrator. In production, a better option would be to apply the settings with a GPO or include them in the image. I'll connect directly to it with the old MSTSC RDP client. We can connect directly this way because we have connectivity over the private or managed network. Now we're logged into the session host as a local administrator. Next, we need to change the local policy, RDP short path for private networks. These steps are similar to modifying a group policy. First, we need to download the Azure Virtual Desktop admin template. Let's open up a web browser. And we'll download the Azure Virtual Desktop administrative templates. The link for that is aka.ms forward slash avdgpo. That will start the download. Once downloads complete, we can close the web browser and go to downloads. We'll open up the cab file and extract the templates. We'll extract it to the downloads directory. Let's go back to downloads. And now we have to extract the zip file. Now we have the contents of the AVD GPO template zip file. We need to move two files from here. The first one is the terminal server hyphen avd.admx file. There it is on the bottom. Let's copy that. We need to put this in the local policy store. Let's hop over to the other file explorer window. From here, let's go to percent sign, win directory or WINDIR percent sign. That's the shortcut for the Windows directory. And then a forward slash policy definitions. Let's paste the ADMX file in this directory. There it is. That file would go into the domain central store if we were updating a domain GPO. Now that that's in place, let's go back to the source directory. From here, go to the folder en-us. Copy the ADML file from this source. We'll go back to policy definitions. Open the ENUS folder and we'll paste that in. 
pay close attention to the directories you're copying those files to. If you don't put them in the correct folder, you won't be able to see the administrative policies in the next step. We can close File Explorer. Next, let's open up the Local Group Policy Editor. Here we are in the Local Group Policy Editor. Go to Computer Configuration, Administrative Templates, Windows Components, Remote Desktop Services. We'll make this a little bigger. Remote Desktop Session Host and Azure Virtual Desktop. And again, if you don't see these settings, make sure you added the template files to the correct folder. Open Enable RDP Short Path for Manage Networks, and we'll set it to Enabled. Leave the port to 3390 and click OK. We also have to make sure that port 3390 is open on the session host firewall. This session host has a local Windows firewall. I'll use PowerShell for this. Here's the command in multiple lines that opens up UDP port 3390 through the local firewall. This command adds the rule that allows short path for managed networks. I'll select and run it. I'll supply a link to this command in the comments below. We can close all the windows and let's restart this session host so those settings take effect. We're back on the client and we have one setting to take care of. Let's open and edit the local group policy. And again, this is the local policy on the client. We're doing this the manual way. In larger environments, it would be best to push the setting out through a group policy. Go to Computer Configuration, Administrative Templates, Windows Configuration, Remote Desktop Services, Let's make this bigger. Go to Remote Desktop Connection Client. Open up Turn Off UDP on Client. For my client, it's set to Enabled, which disables UDP. That's why when we initially connected to the session host, the connection was using WebSockets. Change this to Not Configured. And Apply. We can close that. Our session host finished restarting. I only have one session host running in the host pool, so I know I'm going to connect to that same session host. Again, that's just for this demo. In production, we would have to make these changes to all session hosts and all clients. Let's open up the remote desktop client, and we'll connect to that host pool again. Once we're logged in, let's open up the client connection settings. Now our connection quality is good and we're using UDP. Our transport protocol is UDP private network. That means it's working as we expect. Also, the round trip time is now one millisecond. Although three milliseconds wasn't bad, one millisecond is better. That's how to configure short path for managed or private networks. That is how to configure RDP short path for managed networks. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.